Come along with me as I attempt to do my makeup while I expose my deepest thoughts. I don't know how to do my makeup. <laughs> I'm learning though. Girl, let me get my makeup bag. Okay, I have two makeup bags. I have this and... <laughs> I have a bag. Yeah, um, girl, it's rough. I have my makeup video here. I'm just gonna follow along over here. So if you see me looking back and forth, it's because I'm looking at the video. Ooh, I'm not gonna be able to see. First things first. Yeah, we got the One Direction shirt. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I'm gonna spray my thermal spring water. I don't have my glasses on, so I don't know if y'all can see. Sorry. We're gonna spray a little bit of this. Woo, woo, woo. That was a little too much. And now we're going to put, okay, let me just follow what she said. Okay, she said to start with the primer. Y'all see? She said to start with the primer. So I'm gonna start with the primer. We're gonna learn together. Okay, we're gonna, ooh, this feels nice. Oh, I like this. I just bought it, so I've never used it before, but oh my gosh, I love this. This power grip primer. Everyone's been telling me to get this and woo, the grip is gripping. Okay. Grips, grips. Oh, okay. Grip game strong. I'm start with foundation as always. Um, where should I start with brows? So I have two different foundations and I'm going to combine them. We're gonna see what the end result is because they're both not directly my shade, but I'm hoping if I mix them together, it'll give me the look that I would like. Y'all can see that. <laughs> I got these brushes as a set. I have no idea which one is which. It doesn't have the names on it. I thought it would have the name, like this one's for foundation, this one's for concealer, but they don't do it like that. Or is that just me? I don't know. I'm new to all of this. I'm trying. So I think, okay, I think one of these is a foundation brush. Let me see what brush she uses. I, but I just felt like that was not the right shade. So we're gonna try to use this. Okay, we're gonna use this for a foundation brush. I hope this is a foundation brush. I don't know. We're just gonna blend it. Let's blend everything together. If you guys don't know, I moved out of my... Wait, you're not supposed to... Hold on, I'm sorry. You're not supposed to drag. You're supposed to just pat, right? Okay. I moved out of my house, like officially, officially moved out last year. And I've been living alone for the past... How long has it been? Oh my gosh. <gasps> it's about to be a year since I moved out, which is actually crazy. I don't think this is my color because it still looks lighter than my actual complexion. I think it's because I've been out in the sun a lot, so my skin is especially in the summer my skin does get darker so i think that's what it is because this foundation used to fit me i want to talk about what it's like to live alone because i think especially growing up as a witness you imagine moving out and finally being on your own and finally living life on your own and girl don't get me wrong i have no regrets i'm so glad that i moved out i'm so glad that i push hard that i pushed and i pushed and i kept on i never gave up on myself and i moved out i will never regret that i'm so glad i did it if i had to go back and do it again i'd do it all over again it has been worth it but who child girl it comes with highs and lows especially the way that i left home because when you're 18 or you're going to college or or people in their 20s when they leave their parents house it's usually on good terms not usually but a lot of people it's on good terms you know they had good terms i did not leave on good terms i had an ultimatum i had left my house because i had no other choice my mom gave me an ultimatum and she said either you delete this youtube channel or you are leaving this house and i was like i'm not deleting the youtube channel so i guess i'm leaving the house and i only had like two days i only had two days because she said i had till the end of the day or else i was out that night she told me i went to my cousin's house and i spent the weekend with her and i literally found an apartment in that weekend just like that it's so crazy if y'all want to hear the story go check out my xjw story but i cannot believe it's been two years since I actually decided to move out for the first time. Two years ago, I never would have thought that I would be living on my own in a whole nother state. I remember I was going to meetings on Zoom and I was making comments. I was a loyal Jehovah's Witness and now I'm an apostate out living on my own, living my best life, creating the life that I want and doing what makes me happy. Like I, I'm just making my inner child so happy and it makes me so proud of myself. I never would have thought this was possible, seriously. Before I moved, the thing that was stressing me out was moving out. I was focused on moving out, moving out, moving out, moving out, moving out, right? When I moved out, the high was there. I was like, oh my God, I got my very own apartment. I live on my own. I did it. I moved to another state. The high was there. I was like, yes, yeah. you know, I was super happy. And then like two weeks later, the high left and I was sad. I was like, oh my gosh, I miss my family. I miss my family. I felt guilty. I was like, oh my gosh, did I make the right decision? I'm here all alone. What am 
I doing? I was on to the next and I wanted something else. It was like after I finally got what I wanted so bad, what I worked so hard for, after I had it, it was like, mm, cause it's really the chase. Sometimes it's just, you get so addicted to the chase that when you finally get what you've been chasing, it's like, that's it. Okay, next, I wanna chase something else. I think I just assumed that once I moved out, everything was gonna poof. Everything was gonna be great. I was gonna be so healed and happy. The mental health was gonna be a-okay. Don't get me wrong. My mental health definitely has gotten better since I distanced myself and I'm doing my own thing, but it still doesn't fill the void of what I have to fill myself. And it doesn't fill the void of the work I have to do, the inner self work, you know, the shadow work I have to do. Tapping into my pain and my trauma. And just because you move out, you know, you're living your own life, it doesn't mean that trauma isn't still there. And I'm still working on trying to be my best self while at the same time appreciating my wins and still being grateful for where I'm at because it can be so easy to just be focused on the next, on the next, on the next, on the next and not just be present. Materialistic things do not heal you. Space does not heal you. Space gives you the space to heal but it's not gonna heal you. You have to do the work to heal yourself. Next we're gonna use the concealer. I don't know if you can see. Focus on the conceal. Oh on the concealer. We're gonna use the Lancome concealer. Yeah, she's putting it in her, okay. So just put it in your, in your, okay, let's see if we can do this. Is it, I can't look at you and do it, hold on. I have to look in the mirror. Okay, I hope. <laughs> I hope I'm doing this right. We gotta cover up these bags, you know? They're designer bags, but still. Then we have to do this part, right? Okay. So we're gonna, I think that's way too much. Oh my goodness. I don't like it to look lighter than my, like I don't want it to be too light. Like I wanna stay my skin tone. I love my skin tone and I wanna keep it its beautiful self, but I don't know. I don't know what I'm saying. I heard that leaving your concealer on and just letting it sit for a little bit helps it blend in a little bit more. Don't worry. The more I try, the more I'm gonna master makeup and I'm just gonna continue rooting myself. You got this, you look cute girl. You look cute, girl. Oh. Uh... Okay, anyways, another thought I was having is that I need a new therapist. I have been through, oh God. Just the thought of finding another therapist is so exhausting. Like y'all, if I could tell you how many therapists I have been through throughout my life, I know I need one, but it's like, ugh, like trying to find one. I may have to do it online. We'll see. Better help sponsor me. I'm just really focusing on my mental health right now. And that's why this video is sponsored by BetterHelp. Girl, you can't even say the name. That's why this better. And that's why this. And that's why this. And why. And that's why this video is sponsored by BetterHelp. Let's. Ooh. Ooh. Not Riri. Riri, talk to me. Riri's been hit. Riri's been hit. Oh God! Look, 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 look! Riri's been hit, y'all. She's been hit. Girl, I'm sorry. Girl, I'm sorry. Another thing that's been on my mind a lot is adulting. Adulting is not easy at all. Adulting is not always fun. Don't get me wrong, I love this whole process, but it can also be very hard. It's so weird because I moved out and I've distanced myself from so many people. I have cut off so many people that just don't align with the person that I'm becoming and my true authentic self. And it's hard because you're losing friends, you're losing people that have been close to you. You're even losing like family members that you used to talk to. I don't think this concealer is light enough because do y'all see a difference? I don't see a difference. Does that mean that my foundation is too light or is my concealer not light enough? Which one? Which one? I want friends, but I don't want friends. Don't get me wrong. I love my solitude. I love being a homebody. I love just being in my own company, being my own energy, because it's hard to find a good friend. It's hard to find good, genuine people out there who are like-minded like you, who are trying to just be their best selves, are not grimy, are not toxic, are not lying, deceitful, nasty, mean people. It's hard to find a good person, a good friend. And I know I just need to put myself out there. It's all about becoming comfortable with being uncomfortable and that's probably like another thing about moving out is just like ooh, moving out you're gonna have to be comfortable with being uncomfortable oh 
you know what I want to talk about? Setting boundaries. Oh my gosh. Setting boundaries with JW parents? Girl, it is so hard. Yo, no, let's get into this. Let's talk about the guilt that comes with setting boundaries. Let's talk about the guilt that comes with moving out. I moved out because I'm bettering myself. I'm bettering my future. I'm trying to work hard now so I can just chill later. And moving out as great of an accomplishment as it was, I moved to a whole nother state where I don't know anyone. I had to leave my family and I miss them. Like, of course I miss my family. And it was hard because you feel guilty for leaving your family. You're not really leaving them. You're finding yourself. You're trying to discover yourself in a whole new state. That's the best way to grow. It's hard because sometimes they can take it personal and they can take it as if like, oh, well, oh, you trying to leave me. Or, but it's really just trying to establish my independence and trying to be my best self. And it's like dealing with the guilt that comes with that. You have nothing to be guilty for if you are moving out. Do not feel guilty. Always do what's best for you. But it's hard doing what's best for you, especially when people in your life don't have the same mindset as you. They don't have the same values as you. They're not aligned mentally, spiritually. It's different because they're going to see things differently. They're going to take things personally. That's one thing I did not know about moving out. The guilt. Oh, okay. So it says. So now I'm going to use my elf sponge and I'm just going to blend out the under eye and the remainder of the other areas where I apply the concealer. Oh. She put it on her nose. I didn't know that. Okay, we're gonna have to do, we're gonna have to put it on our nose. Oh, I feel like that's way too much. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. I put way too much. Ah, girl, it's fine. This is a brush for concealers, right? I don't know. I know I put too much. I know this ain't it, but we're just gonna rock with it. It is so hard being the only one in your family who has woken up. And once you wake up, you can't unwake up. It's hard enough growing up in a cult, right? But then finding out you were actually brainwashed and a religion you thought was the truth was actually a lie. You've been lied to your whole life. And the religion is actually a cult. When I first woke up and I found out about all the cases they didn't tell the police about, I was so angry. And at the time, I didn't know that it's best to just keep silent i was upset i told my family and they thought i was crazy they literally thought i was crazy gaslit me told me to just leave it alone to just trust jehovah trust that everything's gonna be okay and i was like do y'all know what i just said i just said they're protecting pedophiles i just said they're being sued right now for protecting pedophiles and hiding child essay cases hello and the fact that like they could actually hear that and still be like but it's still the truth but oh this but oh these men are imperfect it's just like what how does this not bother y'all it's like figuring out that you live in the matrix and then it's just the guilt that you can get from them that's like how dare you be an apostate how dare you read all this stuff about the religion how dare you just need to trust jehovah and you need to go back to jehovah like i'm sorry for having morals i'm sorry for actually doing what i was raised to do to actually care about other human beings it's crazy when you're the only one that woke up in your family i don't have anyone literally no one in my family that has woken up and the people that have woken up they they woke up but like th they still kind of in it this is not okay children should not have to grow up in this religion if they don't want to like this is not okay being disfellowshipped or not it's gonna suck this is gonna be a very difficult season in your life i'm just letting you know from now especially if you're the only one who's physically and mentally out it's going to be very difficult for you i'm not gonna sit up here and say hey i was physically and mentally out for a while and i had to deal with it no once i woke up and found the truth like that was it i went from being physically and mentally into physically out mentally out there was no pimi. Oh, no, wait. There was no pimo. There was no physically and mentally out. I stopped going to meeting immediately. I didn't do anything. And then when they found out I was having doubts, which I should have just quit quiet about. Oh, they found out I was having doubts. Should have just quit quiet about it. I was forced to have an elders meeting. And if y'all don't know about the elders meeting, I recommend y'all go check it out because I had it with the CEO and it was crazy. They manipulated me. They gaslit me. It was horrible. If y'all want to go hear it, go check out this video right here. It's crazy that I found out all these things about the religion and I was being gaslit. They were making me feel guilty for caring about children that were abused. They were making me feel guilty for things that were inhumane. It messes with your head. That's why I'm saying you gotta build your mental strength because this is not for the weak. Only the strong will survive. We're all strong, our strength is within, but this is not for the weak. When I woke up, I genuinely thought that I was gonna be disfellowshipped, but because I recorded that elders meeting and I posted it and I don't care about what they have to say and they're afraid of being sued, they have not disfellowshipped me. 
even though I'm not disfellowship and my parents still talk to me, it's not the same. It's not the same. It's not easy speaking out. It takes a lot of bravery and courage to stand up here, to get a camera, and to speak against what you grew up in, to speak against what your family values so much, to speak against what your family loves so much, to do what's right. Even when you know it's right, it hurts your family. And that's hard. It's hard. It's hard to deal with that. But it's like, I know what I'm doing. I know I'm doing the right thing, but it still doesn't feel good. It doesn't feel good to be the only one who woke up in your family. It doesn't feel good to have everyone judge you because you're speaking out for what's right. It doesn't feel good. Like my relationship, especially with my mom is not the same. Like it's not the same. Like we still talk, don't get me wrong. We still talk, but there's just unspoken words. It's the unspoken words that I hear. It's just the unspoken thoughts. It's the just knowing I'm literally breaking her heart by posting these videos and by not serving Jehovah. It's hard. It's not easy knowing that she thinks that I'm possessed by Satan and I'm in the world and I given up on Jehovah and everything's gonna go bad for me and I'm gonna die in Armageddon. I hate that she has to worry about that. I hate that she's so brainwashed that she can't see the truth. I hate that I can't vent to my family about growing up in a cult that we all grew up in. I hate that I'm the only one. I don't want to say who has common sense because it's not common sense. It's the brainwashing but brainwash or not it's still not okay. We should not have to go through this. I don't know. Okay next um we're gonna use this Laura Mossier. I think this is called baking. We're gonna bake my face. Okay so I'm gonna get this. <laughs> If I'm being real with y'all, the only thing that's keeping me going, like going, like motivated to just continue, no matter how sad I am, no matter how depressed I am, no matter how bad I feel in the moment, the only thing keeping me going are my visions. It's really my visions for real. I have such clear visions of my life and what I want my life to look like. I am really just creating the life that I want for myself. I, I, I know I'm not doing this right, okay? Leave me alone, I know, I know. If y'all don't know, I have a masterclass going right now on how to move out of your strict JW house. So if you don't know, go check it out. Here's the masterclass. Go check out the masterclass. On this video right here, I talk about visualization and this isn't just like, ooh, magic and ooh, sorcery. It's being able to create the life that you want for yourself. It's taking control of your life and realizing that you really can control your life. You can control where your life goes. Y'all, I know I'm doing this wrong. No, you know what? We're gonna speak goodness onto this. This is the best makeup I've ever done. I know how to do makeup so well. This looks looks so good. This is the best makeup look I've ever done. This looks so beautiful. Oh my goodness. Okay. You see, you gotta be Delulu. You gotta be Delulu. When I say that my visions wake me up every day, my visions literally wake me up every day. I have my vision board where the first thing I see are my visions. My vision board is right there. I have pictures. I put it on my mirror. I put it on my fridge. I'm not kidding. I have my visions everywhere. So I can see it. So I'm constantly motivated because the self-doubt can be so strong, but my visions are stronger. I'm stronger. The best version of myself is stronger. I know I'm meant for better. I know I'm meant to break generational curses. I know I'm meant to be the first millionaire in my family. I know that I'm going to change my bloodline for the better. I'm going to change my generation for the better. I'm going to change my family's generation for the better. There's days where I just want to give up. I just want to throw in the towel, but I know I know I know I'm not going to do that. I refuse to do that because I know within myself what my purpose is. My vision is so strong and powerful and this is the power of writing down what you want your life to look like. You have the power to create your life. You have to write it down though. You have to have a vision in your mind so you can have focus. You gotta know where you're going because if you don't know where you're going, you're gonna be going anywhere, baby. You need to have direction. Oh my God. <laughs> The makeup, I look like a ghost. I look like a ghost. Oh my goodness. Oh wait, I don't think I did this right. I'm supposed to let it bake, but did I? Oh my God. I don't think I did this right. Okay, we're just gonna let it sit. We're just gonna let it sit. Let's continue to chat. Let me share a little bit of my visions because I just wanna speak it into existence and I just love speaking things into existence. This is my divine purpose. No one can speak bad on it. No one can take that away from me. No one can take my hustle away from me. No one can take my future away from me. So I'm not afraid of people speaking bad on my name, speaking bad on my visions because I'm divinely guided and I'm divinely protected, okay? I already won, period. So my vision is I see myself as an entrepreneur, a CEO, 
boss, multiple businesses, multi-millionaire, traveling freely. I go to Paris on the weekends for fun. I get paid to travel. People pay me to travel. Five-star restaurants beg me to eat at their restaurants just because of who I am. Five-star hotels beg me to stay at their hotels just because of who I am. I get paid thousands. I see myself being financially free, working remote, working for myself. I set my own schedule. I set my own hours. I set my own vacation time. I plan my own vacations. I work three hours a day and the rest of the day I spend traveling, going out to eat, going out with friends, dancing, going skydiving on Tuesdays, eating well, eating good food, good vibes, like-minded people, intellectual conversations, surrounded by funny people, like genuinely goofy, funny, ambitious people, friends that genuinely love me unconditionally, friends that like put effort into me, friends that put as much effort into me as I put into them. Cause I'm tired of being the only one to put effort in. That's why I really have distanced myself from so many people and I'm just keeping to myself because if you're not reciprocating my energy, get out of my face. You get to a certain point in your life where you really just don't care about what people have to say. You really don't care what people have to say. But let's stay on track. I was talking about my vision, but that's really the vision I have for my life. That is how delusional I am. I believe it to be true because that is my reality. I know that I'm meant to be a content creator. I'm meant to be an entrepreneur. I'm meant to be a mentor. I'm meant to uplift women. I'm meant to uplift men. I'm meant to uplift people. I was given this gift. I was given this talent talent of speaking and speaking life onto people, speaking positivity onto people. That's really what I was meant to do. So don't get me wrong. I know the world we live in. I'm not saying that I never have to work hard. I do believe in working hard. On this world, on this earth, you have to work hard to survive. I'm not saying you can't enjoy your work. You can't enjoy life. You can't have ease, but you have to work hard at the end of the day. You're going to have to work hard no matter what you do in life, no matter what your job is, no matter what you did for school, what degree you have. In some way, you're going to have to work hard. If you want to be Jehovah's Witness, girl, you gonna have to work hard to be a pioneer. If you want to be a doctor, you got to put that work in in medical school and get their experience and become a doctor. If you want to be a chef, you got to put the work in. You got to go to culinary school and put the work in. Like no matter what you do, you have to put the work in. I don't know if I'm supposed to be using a bra. Oh my gosh, what is that? Oh, oh, it got on my eyelash. Oop. I don't know if I'm supposed to be using this or my brush. She's using her beauty blender. So we'll just use this. Let's do another prediction because we're just talking about my future, I guess. I know I'm going to be the mentor for XJW team. I know I'm meant to be a well-known activist, mentor, life coach for XJW teens. I say that with full confidence because I know that's what I'm meant to do. I'm not scared of having multiple careers. I'm a very multi-passionate person and I have a lot of passions and there's a lot of things I want to complete in my life. I don't limit myself. I'm very free spirited. I like to just, you know, do whatever. So I know what I'm meant for. I cannot wait to see what my future looks like. I have a strong feeling I'm going to blow up so soon and I'm not focused on blowing up. Up, I'm really just focused on getting my community and manifesting such a loving supportive community here and it's hard because like when you're a youtuber a small youtuber and you're just starting out it's hard to find your audience especially an organic authentic one I'm just focused on that I'm just focused on being transparent honest and finding my organic audience people are leaving left right and center okay because my content is all over the place but I know I'm gonna find the right one I know I'm gonna find the right one next we're gonna go in with our Maybelline fit me powder hello okay in the shade Ooh, let me be a little youtuber we're gonna do the maybelline fit me powder in the shade 362 truffle truffle mm -hmm. and you know how they say heavy is the head that wears a crown <laughs> yeah girl this head heavy okay this this big head yeah it's heavy <laughs> Being an apostate girl, it is not easy. It's worth it, it's rewarding, I love it, but there's things that comes with it. Especially when you have JW family, when especially when your whole family are still witnesses, it's not easy dealing with that, the judgment, the, the guilt, the shame, but it's like, as I'm growing older, as I'm doing this more and more, I'm starting to find myself more, you start to care less and less, and you just start to just do what you know is your purpose, do what you know is right, and everything's just gonna work out in the end. I know in the future, the people who are meant to be in my life are gonna be here. And I'm manifesting great relationships with my family. Like I know I'm gonna have great relationships with them in the future. I just need to do what I need to do. And they're gonna see, like eventually there, I know some of them are gonna wake up. Like I just know, I know some of them are gonna wake up. I know that with time, they're gonna see, they're gonna understand why I did what I did. I'm perfectly okay if they never understand. I don't have the expectation, but I 
know, I know at some point something's gonna happen, okay? It may be when I end up on Good Morning America. It may be when I end up having my Netflix special, okay, exposing Jehovah's Witnesses. I don't know, okay? I don't make the rules. But I know at some point they are gonna see. They're they're gonna understand. They're gonna be like, oh, so this is what she was talking about. Oh, so she wasn't crazy. So she actually, she was telling the truth. Oh, so she wasn't brainwashed. She actually knew what she was talking about. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> It's a lot though. Like I know the impacts I'm gonna have on people. I know how famous I'm gonna be. I know it sounds like, girl, please shut up. You have like a thousand subscribers, but it's just annoying. It's like, I know I'm meant to be famous. I know I'm meant to be well-known. I know I'm meant to help people on a grand scale, on a bigger level. I'm not just talking about one, two, three people. I'm meant to help millions of people. It comes with a lot. It comes with a lot of judgment. It comes with a lot of negativity. The higher you go, the higher you go, the harder the fall gonna be. Being a celebrity is just, oh my goodness. <laughs> I just know that I'm gonna be given the strength throughout the journey, no matter how hard this journey is. It's the most rewarding, challenging experience ever. I wouldn't have this any other way. And I know eventually it's gonna get easier. I know eventually I'm gonna find my way. I'm gonna find my soul tribe. I'm not gonna force anything. I'm gonna heal. I'm gonna be happier. I'm gonna be so much more at peace. I'm grateful, yes. I'm very grateful for what I have, but I want more. And I'm allowed to want more. I deserve more. And I'm gonna work hard for more because there's still more I want to complete there's still more goals and that's what keeps me going it's just hard when doing the right thing hurts who you love the most it's hard when setting boundaries and doing what's best for you and following your dreams it's what makes you happy but it hurts who you love the most <sighs> That one's spicy. Mm -hmm. To anyone who's moving out or is hoping to move out and thinks that things aren't gonna work out, bro, I promise you, you're, you're gonna get it. You're gonna get it. I didn't think I would. It didn't happen for me until I was literally pushed. I was literally threatened to get kicked out of my house that I had to go. And I was already kicked out of my house before. Don't think that this was just handed to me, that this was so easy and oh my God, I moved out of my apartment. No, I had to do my time. I had to work hard. I had to hustle. I had to go through a lot of challenging experiences. And I moved out and I still go through hard times I still go through depressive episodes I still battle with guilt I still battle with self-belief and self-worth I'm still human at the end of the day and I still go through those same things but I'm now working on managing my emotions on my emotional maturity and just growing and becoming a better person because sometimes I have the savior complex right like I want to help everyone I want everyone to wake up from the religion okay let's say everyone did wake up from the truth and then what at the end of the day we still live in an effed up world this world is so messed up it breaks my heart because I'm I'm such an empath and I feel things on such a deep level. Like when you think about it, I was like, yo, at the end of the day, no matter how many people we save, there's still how many thousands of children on the other side of the world that are dying every day. Unfairly, that should not be normal. The world is still effed up. Child's SA, it's so desensitized. So many people are just so used to it. It's just like, oh, whatever, who cares? Like no one wants to protect children. One thing the witnesses were right about is that this world is effed up. Okay, the world, mm-hmm. Yeah, you were right about that. Sometimes you just really gotta put blinders on. Not saying you have to ignore what's going on, but sometimes you just have to focus on what you can control and that's that. Just be your best self and just live in your purpose. Don't think after you wake up, that's it. Because then you're gonna start waking up to everything else. When I woke up, I found out about Hollyweird, the things that actually goes down in Hollywood. Then I woke up to Dan Snyder, the whole thing with Nickelodeon, all the cases with Disney, Nickelodeon, and how child SA cases are just so normalized and it's been happening. It felt like my whole life fell apart. After you wake up, you you wake up to the world. You don't just wake up to the witnesses, you wake up to the world and that is just such a crazy experience and every single day I'm waking up. Living on earth is not easy. I don't know, this is just so random. This is just a whole bunch of random topics. Y'all know, I go on tangents, okay? I'm sorry, the ADHD is hitting today. Okay, we're gonna add some more powder just because I want to. Can we just talk about like how elders meetings as a whole is disgusting? Even when I was physically in, mentally in, I did not know how severe elders meetings were. I didn't even understand because I never had to have one. I was already on edge, right? I had just woken up and then I had to have an elders meeting. That woke me up completely. If I wasn't having doubts, that elders meeting sealed the deal. As messed up as that elders meeting was, it helped me really wake up and see this religion for how it truly was. Y'all go watch my elders meeting and you will understand what I mean. Just seeing how these elders
elders treated me and especially how I grew up with them. Like we were literally family and how the brainwash immediately just turned them into these monsters. I think it's just a mix of the brainwash and maybe it's how they are, whatever. The fact that I actually thought this was normal. The fact that I actually thought elders talking down to women and telling them how to live their life was normal. Like the fact that grown adults let grown men tell them how to live their life. What? You're gonna tell me how to live my life. You're gonna tell me who I can sleep with. You're gonna tell me what I can do and what I can't do. You're gonna tell me how much money I can make. Like what? That's actually insane. That is actually insane. And I'm so glad I'm no longer a Jehovah's Witness. Let me tell you, I am so glad I'm no longer a witness. Let this be an inspiration for you. Okay, let this be an inspiration. Your day is coming. You're gonna be able to move out soon. Don't worry. Okay, don't worry. Your day is coming soon. You're gonna be able to be your best self. You're gonna be able to experience so much happiness. Next, we have our ooh, um bronzing powder. Yeah, because I don't know how to contour at the moment right now. So we're just gonna attempt to do this. So I think I want to end this video off just talking to the teens out there. Is that how you do it? Oh, is that how you do it? Oh my goodness. If you are a JW teen, if you are a teenager and you're in a strict JW household, hold on. Keep on going. I promise you there's a better life out there for you. Their journey is going to be tough. It's going to feel impossible. It's going to feel unbelievable. It's going to be hard, but I promise you it's going to be so rewarding. It's going to be so worth it and you're going to make it through. You're going to make it through. Even if you miss your family, I promise you. I don't think I did that right. Because why is it all the way down here? Hello? I don't think I was supposed to do it like that. It's going to be tough. You're going to miss your family. The relationships with your family is, is not going to be the same. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not going to say like, oh my God, it's the best thing ever. This process, this journey is not easy, but I promise you it's going to be so rewarding. You're going to be so at peace, happier. Who knows? Even your relationship with your family members could get better in the future. You never know. I'm still going through it. I still have hope that my relationship gets better with my family, but I'm not going to let my relationship with my family stop me from living my life. I'm still going to live my life. I'm still going to get everything that I've wanted. Everything they told me that I couldn't do, I'm going to do it. Okay? Everything they told me I couldn't have, I'm going to have it. I'm going to do it a million times harder. That's why I have so much oomph with it because once you tell me I can't do something, baby, I'm going to do it. <laughs> I'm gonna do it, okay? I'm gonna do it. And I'm not only doing it to like prove people wrong, I'm doing this to prove myself right because I know I can do it. I know I deserve better. I wanna be a testimony for people to show them that you can literally create the life that you want. You can get out of this religion. You do not have to suffer. You deserve to be happy, okay? You deserve to be happy. So let's finish off this makeup look because I've been here long enough. Y'all are probably tired of hearing me. So I think you're supposed to put it here, right? And then like here too, I don't know. And then here as well, right? And then I also have this, which is like a liquid highlighter. I think you just like dab it. <gasps> Wait, hello? Hello? <sighs> okay, I'm kind of over this. I'm tired. So I'm just gonna set my face and that's it. I don't think she was done, but girl, I can't do this no more. To anyone who is trying to move out, don't give up. It's hard for a reason. It's hard for a reason. This is preparing you for something better. You're meant for greatness. You are meant to have the best life, the real best life, okay? You are meant to have true happiness and you deserve to be happy. You deserve to listen to your own music. You deserve to wear your own clothes. You deserve to have your own style. You deserve to have your own friends. You deserve to live your own life. So now that you're on this earth, you are your own human being. You are your own person. No one owns you. No one controls you. You are your own person. You are allowed to make your own decisions. You're allowed to be your own self. Okay, I cannot talk while doing mascara. So one second while I do my mascara. Moving out is not going to be 100% easy, especially if you have really strict parents. And also if they guilt trip you. Dealing with the guilt trip is not easy. Dealing with parents that guilt trip you is not easy, but you just always have to remind yourself at the end of the day who you are. You're a good person. You're a kind person. You deserve the best experiences. You are a genuine person person who deserves to have good things happen to you. Everything's always going to work out for you. I, I don't think this is good because why is my face? How long have I had this? The best advice I can give you is know yourself, especially if you're going to be home for a couple more months. Know who you are. Get in touch with your beliefs. Know your beliefs. Have it down packed and stand on it. Stand on your beliefs. Stand on what you believe because that's going to make all the difference. When you stand on your beliefs, when you know who you are, no one can tell you anything. Even if your parents try to guilt trip you, it won't matter because you're gonna know yourself so you're eventually gonna get to a point where it's like mm -mm, I know my purpose I know my vision when your self-belief is so strong what your parents say won't even matter it's when you get it to that certain 
level girl it's gems okay it is so gem so we're gonna apply some riri river river some riri oh i guess i should have done my brows okay anytime i do my brows it just doesn't it, see like it's too dark i think i'm gonna just leave my brows alone yeah we're just gonna leave her alone today yummy okay y'all so this is the finished look i mean yeah i know it's i i know i know it's a little ugh, but i think i did you know i didn't do horrible <laughs> It's, 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 it can pass, right? Like from far away, you can't even tell. Like from far away, you can't even tell I don't know how to do my makeup. From far away, it kind of look, it kind of, it kind of hit, right? Right? Like from far away, like if you ain't looking, you like if you, if you kind of just tilt your head, you lift your, your right leg and you tilt your head to the left, it kind of look good. It kind of, you see, like it kind of look, it's always like one eye is good and then the other, it's like, what is that? Like what? And then, you know, I'm gonna stop hating on me. This is, this is the best that I could do for today. And I'm proud and I'm just only going to improve more and more. I think my favorite part is. Oh my, oh my. I know this video was all over the place. I had no direction, I had no script. I really didn't know. But thank you guys so much for watching. This is the finished look. I think we did good. I think we did good. Like for, for my expertise, yeah, y'all. I think we did good. I love you angels and whatever you put your mind to, you can accomplish, okay? If you like what you see and you wanna see more of me, go ahead and type that like button. Tap, 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 tap that like button. Don't forget to sub, 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 subscribe to the channel. To the channel, to the channel. Ooh, 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 ooh